get another retouching tutorial and this is going to be like a beginner skin retouching tutorial in Photoshop. If at all you're a beginner in just Photoshop, you're going to be able to follow along these very few and easy steps and you're going to be like an expert after this very tutorial. And if at all you are maybe an advanced Photoshop user, you're also going to be fo uh, following along and you're going to understand each and every detail about skin retouching in Photoshop. So this basically is a free skin retouching course for you guys and you're not going to be finding any of this free content or this free knowledge I'm about to share with you guys. So you're going to be learning everything about skin retouching from how to import your images into Photoshop to the skin retouching, color grading, the eye whitening, dodging and burning and how to export your images in Photoshop in order to retain those beautiful, nice and vibrant colors so that your images don't change color when you post them on different social media platforms. So, in order to import your images into Photoshop, first of all, we have two options. The very first option is coming right under File and clicking Open. Yeah, you select Open, so File and select Open. Then the second option for those people who have older versions of Photoshop, you can just right click in the interface of Photoshop or the screen of Photoshop. So when you double click right there in the interface, it is going to bring this open image option. And you just have to click that and look for a folder where your image has been stored. So for this case, I'm using uh, Photoshop 2020. So I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to select open image so when you click on open image it is going to uh, look or bring this uh, little window where your images or photos may be stored so for this case the image we are going to be doing for this retouching tutorial we're just going to be using uh, this very image so when i click on it remember it is going to be like a raw image and i want to share with you guys how to process or edit your raw images in Photoshop to get back those beautiful and vibrant colors though you were basically looking at your images on the screen of your camera when you are shooting them. So it's, it is going to be more of getting back the vibrant colors embedded in JPEG files. So you're just going to process this image so that it can look like a JPEG file. So this is basically one of my first steps uh, for color grading my images. In Photoshop so after you have selected your image come and click open like that so it is going to take a few seconds to open the image depending on how uh, fast uh, your PC is or your computer is so right now I want to uh, reset each and everything I'm just going to uh, move up I think everything is at its default so what you're going to be doing we want to calibrate at uh, this very image so by calibration i mean we want to get back the image uh most of the colors the way we are looking at the image at the back of our camera screen and in order to do that we want to embed or embed those colors into this very image so before i can teach you about that uh, when you open your images into photoshop this is going to be basically more of your interface so you'll have the image details right on top and the camera row filter version so this is the camera row window this uh, little window that has just been opened on our computer so here you have various options the basic panel under basic you have exposure highlights and everything blacks clarity and texture then right above it we have the temperature and tint then when we move all the way up, we have profile. So under profile, we have, this is where we start calibrating the image to get back most of the colors. So under this, we have different cameras have different camera profiles. You may find, for example, for my Canon 6D, I have uh, only these colors right here. We have Adobe Color, Adobe Landscape, Portrait Landscape, Vivid, and monochrome so for Nikon they may be having a variety of colors but this is what I have so far for my Canon 6D camera so this image was shot a while back then right here we have 
the camera information or the image information. So this image was shot at ISO 125 using an 85 millimeter shot at f4 at 1 out of 160th of a second. So we want to first of all calibrate this image to get back those colors. So we're going to come under profile and usually I prefer to shoot in landscape. So different cameras, you have to know the camera or picture profile in which you shoot your images. So for this image, I shot it in landscape. So I'm just going to come and select landscape. And when I select landscape, you'll notice that I'll, I will have gotten back most of the colors in this very image. I hope you guys can see this image. The, the image has already been transformed. You can see it before and after. We have those rich skin tones and vibrant colors in this very image. So that is not all. So we want to come right under here. Remember, since I'm a Canon shooter, Canon usually has uh, this tint. You can see the plus seven tint right here. It usually has that kind of tint embedded in its images. So I want to come right here and reduce on that magenta or reddish kind of feel. So I have to choose or select the opposite of magenta and the opposite of magenta is green. So I have to uh, move this towards uh, the green side like this. To reduce on the amount of uh, magentas uh, in this very image. So I'm going to go with a uh, plus a uh, two instead of seven which was initially there then i'm going to come under the highlights and i'm going to uh, knock it down because i want to uh, get back as much uh, detail in this very image so you can see when you hit you get this magnifying kind of uh, glass look so when you i have let me just increase this uh, to have a full view of uh, my image. So I'm just going to drag and drop right down here to get a full view of my image basically. So this is the image we are going to do the adjustments on. So I'm going to knock the highlights down. Yeah, I'm also going to come under the whites and I'm just going to pump them up because I want to enhance these highlights on the cheekbone. I'm going to come to the blacks and I'm going to uh, add, drag it down slightly and I'm going to come under the shadows and I'm just going to pump it up slightly, not too much because when you pump it up, you lose on the uh, contrast in the black. So just take it slightly, I think that is fine. Then I'm going to pump up my exposure a little bit. I think this uh, looks cool and good to me. Then I'm going to come right down here and I'm going to add clarity. Then under the vibrance, since it looks oversaturated, I'm just going to knock it down to around negative 7 and the saturation 2 to around negative 1. I think uh, this looks okay. So that's the before, after, before, after. You can see what you have just done uh, with this image. So you're just going to come. So you have different options right here. We have cancel, done, and open. So for this case, you don't have to click done. Just come and click open. In order to open the image into our Photoshop. So a few seconds and the image is going to be opened into the Photoshop interface. So first of all, this is the image we are going to be doing the skin retouching on. And first of all, before I do start the retouching, I first of all want to, I prefer to, crop my images. The reason for cropping my images is because I usually post these Im images on Instagram and Instagram for an image to occupy the whole screen. Remember if I told your image occupies the whole screen, many people are going to have access to a uh, look at your image as they scroll through the news feed on Instagram. So I want that because I want to get more reach for the image or for my profile in general. So come and uh, select the crop tool. So this is the crop tool. So when you select it, uh, you have different options right here. So Instagram basically allows us to crop images in a ratio of uh, four to five or eight by 10 ratio. So click this and drop down and look for that ratio. So this is what Instagram 
really allows. So I want to crop this image in a way that it is going to have more emphasis onto the face of this model. And in order to do that, I'm just going to first of all drag the corners like that to balance the image because these lines were kind of tilted. Then I'm going to come and I'm going to crop this image like that. So I just want more emphasis on uh, the model's face. That's why, and I want to retain this kind of purple cloth right here. I, I don't want it to seem like the model was naked, so I'm just going to get a reasonable crop. So I think uh, that it looks good to me. So I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard uh, to approve my crop settings. So this is the image after we have cropped it and I feel like uh, we have more emphasis uh, on the face uh, of the model or the body. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing skin retouching. So basically, uh, before we can learn about skin retouching, uh, we want first of all learn about the various tools for skin retouching in Photoshop. And the tools we are going to be using, we have first of all, the lasso tool this is the lasso tool then we have the spot healing brush tool this is going to be used for removing pimples or the blemishes then under it we have various options that can be used for removing blemishes and we have the healing brush tool and the patch tool so we are not going to be using the content away and the red eye then after that we are going to also learn about the clone stamp tool then we're also going to be learning about uh, the mixer brush tool and the ordinary brush tool. So for retouching, we're going to be using the mixer brush tool and the ordinary brush tool. So basically, those are the tools we're going to be using for skin retouching at uh, this very image in this beginner or master class tutorial. So for whichever case, so first of all, what is skin retouching? Skin retouching is basically balancing the skin tones in an image to get a more refined skin tone or more refined skin tones in the image so it is more of uh, enhancing or balancing the transitions within the skin tones in order to get a more balanced skin tones or good transitions between the skin tones of a given image so in this case we're going to be learning about frequency separation yeah let me repeat that we are going first of all learn about frequency separation what is frequency separation frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that divides the image into two so it gets uh, the skin tones or the colors in the image it puts uh, those in one layer then it gets the textures all the outlines of the image and it puts them on a way different layer so that when you combine the two layers you'll be able to get back at this image let me put that in a layman's language it's like when you have a knife and you cut an apple into two this other half is going to be containing maybe different parts of the apple and this other half is also going to be containing the other parts of the apple so when you combine the two parts you'll be able to get back the whole apple as a whole so what we are going to be doing we are going to be separating or dividing this image into two so that we can work with the textures or the colors or the skin tones alone so in order to do that you're going to first of all uh you're going to first of all duplicate the background layer by clicking Ctrl or Command J on the keyboard. Yeah? Hit Ctrl or Command J on the keyboard twice. So we are going to do that to create these two layers right here. So for purposes of being uniform, we are going to name uh, the middle layer. We are going to name it Skin Tones. Or some people call it the Low Frequency layer and this one is usually called the textures or some people call it uh, the high 
a frequency layer like that so we are going to hit enter so let me explain to you why we name these layers in this format or why we put the skin tones layer right in the middle the reason for that is because skin tones are usually embedded right below the textures like even if you touch your skin right now you can feel like the textures are usually on top you can feel them and you can't feel the skin tones meaning the skin tones or the colors of your skin are just beneath the textures that's why we have to name these two layers in this format so we are going to first of all turn off uh, the texture layer and you're going to come and select the skin tones or the low frequency layer like this so when you select this layer remember we only want to make sure that we are going to retain only and only the skin tones or the colors in this low frequency layer we want to remove the textures from uh, this very layer in order to do that we are going to come right here to filter we are going to come to blur so filter then come to blur then when you come to blur move all the way to the right and come to gaussian blur so i'm going to turn this all the way down like this so when you do that you have two zoom tools the zoom in and the zoom out so make sure you get you look for that area that uh, has more skin textures than the rest of uh, the skin you're going to do the retouching onto so for this case you're going to go with this very area so make sure your preview is on so make sure it is not off make sure it is on or selected or checked so we want to move this slider like this until we lose out on these textures until we can no longer see or completely unsee the textures right there so make sure you move as you look at these textures until they disappear completely so like that so we are just going to continue moving until we lose out on those textures i think at around 10 uh, we have lost out on the textures so you can move around by clicking around the image to see if at all all of the textures have been lost out remember all these textures we have lost out you're going to regain them back by subtracting them from this layer so it's like these textures have been basically hidden somewhere for us to pick and put on this texture layer and i'm going to be sh showing you guys how to do that in a bit so come right here and click ok so after you have done so you'll notice that your image has become blurry so if at all you want to zoom in or zoom out your image hit ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can hit command plus or command minus to either zoom in or zoom out your image then come right here to the texture or high frequency layer and now select it and activate it by clicking on the eye icon then we are going to come we want to only re remain with the textures in this layer and remove the colors from the texture layer so come right here to image then click on apply image so when you click on apply image uh, your image is going to look really awkward and you shouldn't worry about that that is also part of retouching so breathing you shouldn't get worried or shocked about that so come right here and look for your skin tones layer so you have to select the skin tones layer because it is the layer where, where we are going to subtract the textures from so select it remember this layer hid our texture so we want to regain them back from this very layer so it's like uh, this layer stored our skin textures we are just going to come to the blending and we're going to change it from uh, multiply we change it to uh, subtract like that i know you may not be having this simply because you have put your pass at 100 the scale, uh, scale at 2 and the offset 128 make sure your previous on the reason for putting these values is because we want to get our textures on a 50 percent gray so we have the 256 
colors in the RGB. So when you divide that by 2, you get 128. That's why we have these figures right here. So come and select or click on OK. So when you do that, you notice that your image has been lost and you can no longer see your image quite well. So don't get worried. Let me show you guys how to reveal or get back your original or initial image. So come right here to normal and look for linear light. So let's look for linear light right here. So you're just going to scroll all the way down and look for linear light. So when you click on linear light, you're going to get back the image the way it was initially before. So remember, we want to prove if at all, if at all we add these two layers, we're going to be able to get back the original image. And in order to prove that, we're going to hit Ctrl or Command and we select on both layers. Then click Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard, G for girl. So Ctrl G or Command G on the keyboard to put them in a group. We are going to rename that group a frequency separation. I hope you're not bothered by my abbreviations. So we want to prove if at all there is a difference be between the background layer or the background image and our frequency separation. And in order to prove that, we are going to hit this on and off. You can see there is no difference at all, meaning we have successfully separated the frequencies of this very image. So here is where we start retouching the image because we can work with these two layers separate and later get back the image looking really nice and perfect. So first of all, what you're going to be doing, you're going to select the texture layer and in order to create a layer on top of the texture layer or in order to make a layer on top of a given layer, select the given layer and make sure it is selected. Then come right here under the adjustments and look for black and white. So when you hit black and white, your image is going to turn into black and white and you shouldn't uh, get worried at all. So remember, we want to see all those areas. Since skin retouching is more of blending or harmonizing or getting smooth skin tone transitions in images, we want to get those very nice skin tone transitions. But in order to see them, you have to first of all locate those areas that have harsh transitions in skin tones. And in order to see those, that's the reason as why, why we have created the black and white layer. So when you after creating that, make sure you come to the red channel and drop down like this. I like that. I think that we can now see uh, the bumpiness in the image. So you can see, I hope you guys can see this cross-like icon. The reason for that is because our caps lock key is on. Yeah. Make sure you turn it off by hitting the caps key. And you get back the tool the way it was looking before. So after doing so, you can now see, uh, you can see these areas have bumpiness in skin tones. We have bumpiness right here. Skin tones are not transitioning well. So we want to blend those areas or even out those skin tones in those particular areas. So this is where by I introduced to you guys the mixer brush tool. The Mixer Brush tool is a tool that is going to help us blend the skin tone transitions and harmonize them quite well to get a beautiful image from the retouching process. So we are going to come under the brushes and we are going to right click and select the Mixer Brush tool. So if at all you don't have it there, you can uh, hit, uh, I think the shortcut is B on the keyboard to get the mixer brush tool. So after doing so, we want to set the mixer brush tool so that it can give us the best and nice results uh, during the blending of the skin tones uh, in this very image. And in order to do that, we are going to have to set it so that it can give us and retain the original skin textures in the image. So make sure you come right here and make sure it is a clean brush. So drop down, make sure I clean brush, then select this second option, 
yeah we have two options right here but select or highlight the second option the reason for selecting the second option is because we want photoshop to automatically clean the brush for us after each and every stroke of blending skin tones after doing so we have the wetness right here if at all you put your wetness up it means your brush is going to be a uh, very wet and when you try to blend the skin tones you're going to be removing or eliminating the textures from the image that's why you have to get a wetness of uh, 8 and below so make sure your load is 75 the mix at 90 and the flow at 100 yeah Wetness is 8, load 75 because we want a medium load. The mix at 90, we want a more perfect mix or blend of the skin tones and we want the brush to have a full flow or a high opacity basically for the blending of the skin tones. Yeah, make sure we have this second option right here. Make sure sample all layers is not marked or selected because we only want to work on this as skin tones layer so come and select the skin tones layer and now we are going to start blending or mixing the skin tones in this very image remember skin tones are in the low frequency layer so we are just going to zoom in reasonably not all the way so that we get we can get precise areas to mix or blend so when you're doing the mixing or blending make sure you mix or blend the mid tones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone the reason for doing that is because we don't want to drag color from one area to another, maybe from the highlights to the shadows. Make sure you mix the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone, and make sure you blend it, the areas where they are transitioning to get a beautiful image. So let's start a blending. So let's start from here. So we are just basically trying to a blend uh, the skin tones and as you can see guys I did not I'm not using uh, more of complicated things because I want a beginner or someone out there who can't afford a uh, com complicated retouching equipment like uh, maybe retouching tablets to be able to follow along as you can see all here in my background I'm just uh, using my mouse uh, to you can hear the clicks so make sure when you're mixing you keep on checking on your progress by turning off the black and white layer by hitting the eye icon and you can turn the whole frequency suppression group on and off you can see us the before after before after you can see what we have just done with a few strokes of a brush so come and turn this back on i know you can as well work without the black and white layer, but for purposes of uh, knowing where to blend, uh, we need it as our guide. So, in order to increase or decrease on the size of your, your mixer brush tool, you can either use the left or the right brackets on the keyboard to either decrease or increase on the size of uh, the mixer brush tool. So, let's make sure you're still on your skin tones layer and just continue a blending like this so we're just blending the skin tones or the transitioning I hope you can see how I'm doing the blending so you're just going to come right here at this highlight you're just going to blend it like that then we have some kind of shadow right here you're just going to come and you're just going to blend there like that then we have the shadow on the nose area so you shouldn't mind because I'm going to be sharing with you guys the very second technique you can use to uh, fine tune or get uh, the best out of your retouching process. And I hope you guys are learning something and don't forget to subscribe if at all you haven't subscribed yet to uh, this channel. So what we are doing we are just basically trying to even out the skin tones or blend them uh, using the mixer brush tool uh, in Photoshop. So like I said, I'm mixing the mid-tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone. And I'm not dragging from a one area or one different area to another because I want to 
get uh, the best out of this image and I don't want to uh, mess it up anyway. That's why I'm, I'm trying to uh, remain within the borders or boundaries of the areas I'm trying to uh, mix or blend. So zoom out slightly and now drag down to get to the lower part of the body. I know most retouchers tend to uh, blend the face and they feel like they have done really a nice job. Yeah, you may have done a nice job, but remember the whole image is going to be critiqued by people who are going to look at it. Make sure you retouch each and every single area in the image that has skin. So we are going to come right down here and we are just going to blend the skin tones in these very areas. You can see we have a highlight here. I'm just going to come and I mix that. Then you're just going to come right here on the chest and blend. You can see I tend to skip some areas because I just don't want to drag color from uh, one area to another. Uh, in case that area has different light or lighting or how light was falling on that particular area. So I hope you guys are following along and are really taking notes because after here we're going to be learning about how to perfect the areas we may have missed out when we are using uh, the mixer brush tool in order to uh, blend uh, the skin tones like that. So let's do this. I hope you can see how I am taking a uh, time. You know, skin retouching is not uh, a rush through process or method. Uh, it is really, it really takes a lot of time and patience uh, to master. And don't forget uh, practice. Constant practice is going to uh, get the best out of uh, your retouched images. So. Make sure you don't uh, just look at this tutorial and uh, sit back and relax and you feel like uh, you're a professional retoucher. Make sure you go back and uh, do a practice. I hope we are done with that because we are going to be refining that using the second method. So let's turn this off and see what we have done for uh, the skin retouching so far. So that's the image before, after, before after if at all you feel you haven't done quite a nice job with the black and white layer select the skin tones layer and just continue uh, blending or evening out on the uh, various skin tones uh, in the image like that so let's turn off and see what you have done so far just the before after before after you can come and blend this part really nice and well so let's delete the black and white layer by selecting it. You can either select it and hit delete on the keyboard. Then come back and select the skin tones or low frequency layer. So here is where I share with you guys the very second method of how to retouch your images using frequency separation. And this very method is by using the lasso tool. Yeah, we are going to be we are going to be using the lasso tool in order to get back those nice skin tones and blend them even more for the areas we may have skipped or accidentally missed when we are using the mixer brush tool to blend the skin tones. And in order to do that, come right here and select your lasso tool. So this is the lasso tool. Or the shortcut is L on the keyboard. Then this time around, we are going to uh, zoom in the image. You can see we still have a blemishes, and you shouldn't uh, worry or mind about that. So you can hit, uh, hold down the space bar and drag the image to get a precise selection. So after you have gotten your lasso tool, come right here and make a selection on the skin area. And before you can do that, make sure your feathering is uh, uh, between 23 and 25 pixels because we want refined edges or smooth edges of our lasso tool selection. Make sure Ant Alias is selected and just come and select only and only the skin area and you can 
resist from selecting the eyebrows or a part of the clothing because it is going to be copying color from those areas. Make sure you leave a reasonable uh, space between those areas since our feathering is uh, really high. Then come right here to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So after you have done so, it is going to bring back the Gaussian blur we did when we are applying our frequency separation. And uh, under this, we, we are just going to start moving this further. Don't move it towards the back, just move it uh, further in front. So in order to do that, make sure uh, it is a reasonable zoom. Then uh, start moving this until we get uh, the best, I think at around 30 we have uh, the best skin texture and it looks natural enough after you have done so come and hit ok so we want to apply this uh, skin texture to the rest of the overall image so come right here and you can see the shapes are making uh, the way light is falling on the image like that you can serve uh, intentionally left or out this highlight because I don't want to apply it on the or it is going to flatten the whole image as a whole so come right click and hit on Gaussian blur and it is going to apply that effect on that area then you can come and make that selection below the eye right click and hit on Gaussian blur and if I told you you feel the effect is too much hit shift command F or shift control F on the keyboard to reduce on that effect like that you can reduce it like that so just come you're just going to come now to the highlight right click and hit on Gaussian blur like that so you just want to apply uh, the effect on the rest of uh, the image so I'm going to I'm going to share with you guys uh, the mistake most uh, people that use frequency separation do and that mistake usually flattens out on particular areas. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys what you should do uh, with uh, the frequency separation and the areas where it, it should or shouldn't be applied at. So I think uh, that looks beautiful and fine. So let's come right in between the eyebrows and also apply the effect right there. Then you can come right here. You can see I'm not selecting the whole nose as a whole. Uh, I'm just wanting to select particular areas. You can see that effect. And if at all you feel it is too much, hit Shift Control or Shift Command F on the keyboard to reduce on that effect on that particular area. I'm sorry if at all you can hear some noise in the background. So I think uh, that looks fine to me. So let's. Uh, come and also fine tune this other area and this is why we are going to first of all reduce on the effect even more because we don't want to this area to look really plastic so you're going to hit shift command f or shift control f uh, to reduce on the effect on that particular area so you're just going to go with 70 percent and you're just going to come and apply it on the rest of this other side like that right click hit Gaussian blur so as you can notice I'm not using any shortcuts because I want each and everyone to follow along like a beginner or a young boy back in school so let's do this I think uh, this looks beautiful and fine so far so after we have done so we want to apply the effect on the rest of the image and we are done doing so. So let's see before and after. You can see what we have just done. Remember now the image has blemishes or pimples or skin imperfections. So we want to clean up the image. And for this case, we are going to select the texture layer. Remember blemishes are part of skin textures. Then we are going to select, first of all, the spot healing brush tool. I'll show you guys how this works. So zoom into the image because we want to get uh, precise areas where the blemishes are so after you have done so make sure you set it right mm -hmm. make sure the layer it is not sampling on all layers make sure it is 
on this very layer so you have to leave you don't have to mark or select this so you can just come and dab over the blemish to uh, get rid of them like that so photoshop is automatically sampling for us uh, those areas where it wants to replace the blemish like that you can see it is really nice and awesome but there are those cases whereby it won't select for us quite well and here is why you have to select manually or sample uh, that area you have you want to replace the blemish with uh, here is where I, I introduced you guys the other healing brush tool so at the healing brush tool you have to sample by yourself yeah so for example you want to replace this blemish I'm just going to come right under that and I'm going to hit yeah I'm going to hit the alternate key on the keyboard so I'm going to click on a clean area and just paint over the blemish like that to uh, remove it or get rid of it I hope that is fine so you can see I don't prefer using the healing brush tool because when Photoshop automatically samples for us you can see the blotchiness it uh, brings to the image and I don't want that so I'm just going to come right and I'm going to undo the spot healing brush tool in those particular areas or oh, I can just undo everything for the spot healing brush tool so like that I'm just going to undo everything then I'm going to come right I prefer using the clone stamp tool so come and select the clone stamp tool and start removing those pimples or blemishes so I'm going to reduce on the size so make sure your clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish you're going to remove so hold down the alternate button and click on a clean area and pa paint over or dab over the blemish you're going to eliminate or remove from uh, the image like that so you really have to take your time while removing uh, these pimples or blemishes because uh, it contributes over 80 percent to uh, your overall skin retouching uh, process so make sure you really take your time while sampling or removing the blemishes or cleaning up uh, the skin of uh, the models we are doing skin retouching on so make sure you don't rush through this step because it is really risky remember when you rush uh, you end up crashing so hit alternate click on a clean area and just uh, dab over the blemish you're trying uh, to get rid of anyway so for this case I'm going to be uh, using the healing brush tool and the clone stamp tool uh, simultaneously to speed up uh, the blemish removal process in this very image so you can see I'm now using the clone stamp tool and it is really fast enough when you don't have enough time to uh, remove the blemishes so I think it is really doing a pretty nice job so basically we're just cleaning up uh, the image and we are on our texture layer and this is uh, you're watching a beginner skin retouching tutorial and if at all you are an advanced retoucher you can as well follow along and don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section about uh, this very image we are trying to uh, retouch and yeah I'm going to be giving you guys the rough of this image so that you can practice and you see uh, your retouching level and for those who did not make it far to, uh, to this point in this tutorial uh, they have uh, really missed out on this giveaway of this uh, raw file so that is the importance of keeping uh, locked on the tutorials so let's do that and clean up the image really quick because we don't want to uh, remain with uh, these blemishes at the end of our skin retouching process so right now I'm using the clone stamp tool to sample from a clean area and painting over the blemishes I'm trying to uh, remove in this very 
image. So cleaning up the image really has to take time because when you don't take your time, uh, blemishes are going to uh, remain. You can as well use it for cleaning up uh, the clothing like I've just done. So when you don't take your time, blemishes, you're going to uh, leave out most blemishes and your images are going to look really awkward. So you have to take your time. So I'm just basically sampling from a clean area and just painting over uh, the blemishes using a clone stamp tool like that. I think uh, that looks fine. So let's uh, clean up uh, the chest area because we have some of these tiny tiny black soap spots. So I'm now using the spot healing brush tool by just uh, increasing and dabbing over the blemishes right here to clean up uh, this image. I think we are done cleaning up the image. Let's see the before and after so far for this beautiful image. So this is the image before, after, before, after. You can see what we have just done uh, with the skin retouching. And now what we are going to be doing, we are going to be learning about the global dodging and burning to contour or bring back shape or dimension to this very image. And before we can do that, I think we can do a little bit of cleaning up right here. Yeah, like that. Let's just clean up. I think we are done with the cleaning up. So let's close this and we are now going to be doing do global dodging and burning. So basically global dodging and burning is more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows in the image. I know some people have dodging and burning for skin retouching, but the re dodging and burning we are going to be learning about is using curves in Photoshop to enhance or bring back the shape or dimension or contour the image in this case. So we are going to create two curves adjustment layer. So remember when you are dodging, we dodge the highlights or we enhance the highlights and when we are burning, we burn the shadows or we enhance the shadows in the image. So we are going to come right under curves and make a midpoint and now first of all brighten like that to a reasonable size. Close this, make sure this is selected, click Ctrl or Command I to hide that effect. So we are going to be revealing this effect by using the brush tool. So we are going to rename this. Remember we brighten, we are going to name that Dodge like that. Then you are going to come right back and select curves and you are going to darken. And this time around you are going to name hit Ctrl or Command I to hide that effect. Then you're going to name that burn like that. Then you're going to put these two in a group by hitting command G to put them in a group. So we can name that that little group dodge, dodge and burn like that. So what you're going to be doing, you're going to open this and you're going to select the burn layer because we want to create a black and white layer that is going to guide us like we did here with the frequency separation. So Make sure I select the burn layer, come right down here and select black and white. Then darken it up like that to see the highlights and the shadows quite well. And now close this, select the dodge. We are going first of all, let's first of all burn, sorry, get the normal brush tool. So this is the normal brush tool. Make sure our pass is 8%, the flow 100%. Smoothing is at zero and you are going to start uh, burning the shadows. And in order to see that quite well, turn off the frequency separation group. Remember when you are doing frequency separation, most of the cases it tends to flatten out our images. And remember, you don't want to see that in the image. You want to see how the image was looking like originally. So we are going first of all, reduce on the size of the brush make sure white is on the foreground and to toggle make sure click on the arrows or to get black and white just click on these two boxes so make sure it is white on the foreground so we're going to paint using a white brush and remember when you're dodging and burning make sure you do that when the image is not over zoomed in so this is well remember to dodge and burn the way someone is going to be looking at the image 
So we are going to first of all burn. You can see this. We are going to enhance the cheekbones of the model like that. Then you are going to come and burn like this. Burn there. Burn. You are going to burn there. Reduce on the size. Come and burn. We are just enhancing these collar bones. And I think that is it. We are just going to burn here. Just burn a little bit on the eyeshadow like that. I think that is fine. So let's turn this off and see what we have done so far. It is not too much. And you're going to be able to see that when I turn on the frequency separation group. So turn this back on. Get back to the dodge and now we're going to dodge the highlights. So we are going to enhance the highlights in the image. So we're just going to enhance this highlight. Enhance this highlight like that. Enhance there. We have this collar bone. You're just going to enhance it. Enhance. And now we're just going to enhance this highlight. So we have this highlight on the nose. Let's just come and enhance it. I think that is all for the dodging. So let's turn back the frequency separation layer on. And turn this off, the black and white. And we're going to delete this. And remember, in order to... I delete the effect or reduce on the effect you have applied on a given area. You can simply come and get black on the foreground. Yeah, get black on the foreground and just paint over the area you want to uh, delete the effect from. So, like for this instance, I'll just come and delete it from that area. So, you can see before, after of the dodging and burning of this image. It is not too much, but I think it is really enough and worth it so we have just added shape or dimension to the model's face and that is all for that right now what we want to do we want to color grade this image and under color grading we are going to be using the selective color option in photoshop and after we are going to dive into the camera raw filter to do the further color grading process so we're going to come right here and we are going to select or click on selective color and we're going to come under the red channel and they are going to uh, reduce on the amount of the yellows in the reds like that and they are going to uh, reduce on the magentas in the image like that then you're going to come to the yellows and they're going to reduce on the amount of yellows like select selective color works with a specific color selectively that's why it is a selective color anyway so you're going to come right down here and you're going to come to the blacks because one enhance the darks in the blacks so i'm just going to go with around three and we're going to come the yellows and i just want to add some kind of blue tone to this image i think uh, that is fine for me then we're going to create a stamp visible layer for all we have done for this image and in order to do that we're going to hit shift control alternate e on the keyboard yeah, shift alternate command E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. And you're going to duplicate that by hitting Ctrl or Command J. So under color grading in camera, we are going to be doing eye whitening and the overall color grading process. So we're just going to zoom in and come under filter, then come to camera row. And when you do that, it's going to open up the camera row filter. And under this, we are going to be using uh, the HSL panel first of all to color grade so we're going to come under the hues and we're going to uh, play around with these hues to see what uh, works best for us for this overall image so you can see I want us to regain or retain the purple color so I'm just going to go with uh, the hue of the red towards the left hand side I'm going to come to the oranges i'm going to knock it up slightly like that i'm going to come under a saturation and i feel like my image is looking yellowish i'm just going to knock down the saturation in the yellows all the way down then i'm going to come under the oranges and i'm also going to knock it down like that to around negative 12 then i'm also going to come under the reds and i'm going to knock it down slightly to around negative one i think that is done with the hsl panel then i'm going to come under 
right under the camera calibration yeah this is the calibration option and i'm going to play around with these sliders so you can see let me first move them so that you can see what it brings into the image so i'm just going to go with a uh, plus one in the reds and the saturation i'm going to knock it down i'm going to come to the greens and i'm going to see what it has in store for us i'm going to go with around negative nine or eight I'm going to come the saturation and I'm going to uh, knock it down slightly to 7. I think uh, this image is turning out to look beautiful and amazing. I'm going to come to the blue primaries and I'm going to apply uh, around with the blue primary. I'm going to go with around 3. I'm going to go with 3 and I'm going to come to the saturation. I'm going to uh, knock it down slightly. So you can see the before and the after before after i feel like my image was really red and i had to uh, drop it down slightly so let me uh, turn up the saturation a little bit i think this looks nice then i'm going to come under a basic panel right here and i'm going to first of all add contrast into the image i'm going to go with the contrast of around uh, eight for this image and I'm going to add a little bit of blacks into the image like that to around 4. And I'm going to come to the clarity and I'm going to pump it up to around 8. I think uh, this looks amazing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to do the eye whitening for the model's eyes. So I'm just going to hit the zoom tool and I come to the eyes, make sure it is precise. So come under the adjustment brush tool this is the adjustment brush tool and we are going to uh, set it up so make sure first of all you have selected it so we want to whiten the eyes of the model so i'm going to come the temperatures remember i want to desaturate or remove the yellowness from the eyes of the model i'm going to come and knock it down to around negative 12 then the tint i'm going to take it to around 62 i'm going to pump up my highlights to around four and my whites to around four then i'm going to come all the way down to the saturation because i want to remove color from the white area of the eye i'm going to uh, turn it down to around negative 61 and i'm just going to paint over uh, the white area of the eye like that to do the eye whitening Remember we are doing eye whitening and we just don't want to get our natural eyes for this model. And when you're doing this, make sure you only paint over only and only the white area of the eye because we don't want the eyes to look really unnatural or unrealistic at the end of uh, the retouching process. That's why I left out this reddish kind of feel because everyone really has it at the corner of the eyes. So let's uh, zoom out and see what we have done for the eye whitening. I think uh, this looks cool and amazing. I'm going to come and I do some little bit of adjustments right uh, down here. So I'm just going to come right down here. Okay, let me do that in Photoshop. So I think I've done the color grading in Camera Raw. So what we're going to be doing, we want to add some slight red reddish in the tones or the redness in the tones so i'm going to come right down here selective color and i'm going to come under the red channel i don't know why this is not responding so come the red channel and i'm going to uh, add some little bit of science to the reds like that yeah i think this looks now amazing and beautiful so let me close this and I'm going to put the color grading all in a group. So shift and I'm going to hit on this and click Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard to group the color grading. So let's do the color grade like that. So let's say before and after for the color grading. So that's why the image before color grading and after before after. I hope you guys really love this image the way I do. So what we have so far done, we have done frequency separation uh, using a mixer brush tool and the lasso tool method. Then we did the dodging and burning. You can say before and after 
Then we did the color grading to get those beautiful skin tones and the eye whitening. So what we are going to do right now, we are going to now save the image after we have done our overall skin retouching. And in order to save the image, we are going to come right here to file and we are going to come to export and come to export as. So the reason for hitting export as is because we want to embed all those colors into our image so that when we post it or share it anywhere, all those colors are going to be embedded or put into our image. I hope you guys can understand. So what we are going to do right now, we have to come up, first of all, set the image into a JPEG kind of file. So come and select format and hit JPEG. Then we are going to leave all these in their defaults. Yeah, since it is going to be an Instagram image, then we are going to hit embed color profile to put all the profiles or the colors into the image. We have color graded and retouched. And after doing so, we are going to hit export like that. So when you hit export, it is going to bring a destination where we would like to save the image. And for this case, we are going to save the image on our desktop and we are going to name it uh, retouching, retouching class. I hope that is fine. So after doing so, hit save and it is going to take a few seconds depending on how fast your laptop or computer is. And voila, your image is going to be saved and this has been all about skin retouching and this has been an in-depth tutorial about skin retouching in Photoshop. And if at all you love this tutorial, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to comment in the comment section. And above all that, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If at all you have just watched this from this channel for the very first time, I'm Ronix from, Ron from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet another retouching story and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating.